Welcome to Aloha United We Stand, Aloha United Way's weekly spotlight on the people and organizations making a difference here in Hawaii, and we are on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Chris Aguinaldo, and as always, please join the conversation. We are on Twitter at ThinkTechHI. And thank you very much for tuning in. Our guest today is Kata Isari. She is the Executive Director, Hawaii Region, of the Joyful Heart Foundation. And she's here to talk about this campaign called Hawaii Says No More. As you know, uh, many of our viewers know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And this campaign here in Hawaii addresses awareness, prevention, and hopefully outreach and resources available to the people here in Hawaii. Kata, welcome Hi. to Aloha United We Stand. Thank you, it's good to be here. So uh, was that recap uh, that short recap accurate? That was excellent. That sure, was thank you summary. very much. But could you let our viewers know about the Joyful Heart Foundation here in Hawaii and how you're affiliated with the national organization, particularly uh, in this time where in the last week or so, uh, we've had discussions, not just on the internet, uh, but I have found that I've gone places and in this last week with, uh, with uh, the national campaigns and the um, allegations and tapes that have come out, it's now become a topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about that and the work that you do and the Hawaii Says uh, No More campaign. Great, yes, you're right. This is a very timely conversation that we're having today given what's been going on the last week. The Joyful Heart Foundation was founded by Mariska Hargate, who's a television actress and advocate. She appears on Law & Order SVU. And when she began on uh, Law & Order SVU a little over 18 years ago, mm -hmm. she didn't know anything about these issues. So she studied about the issues to prepare for her role. And she actually went through a training at a rape crisis center for 40 hours. And as a part of that, she was really startled at the statistics of domestic violence and sexual assault across the country. And then when she started to appear on the show, she started getting a really unusual kind of fan mail. Um, she uh, started to hear from survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence who shared their personal stories with her, sometimes saying that they had never told anyone before they wrote her. And the information really uh, raised her awareness and the letters from the fans really touched her heart. And she spent a lot of time in Hawaii over the years and she was here in Hawaii uh, mm -hmm. just over 12 years ago when she had an experience that uh, helped her to decide to start the Joyful Heart Foundation to help survivors reclaim their lives and to bring joy back into their healing. Uh, so we started in Kona 12 years ago and we've grown across the country from Hawaii we moved the Hawaii office to Honolulu about five years ago, and we now have offices in Los Angeles and in New York. So just by having someone with uh, public stature, someone who, who uh, could be a voice out there, they reached out to her. How important was that to get in front of people that their experiences may not be singular, insular? Uh, it sounds like that she had you know, given access a point and, and people connected. How, how important is that? It's really important. One of the uh, challenges around sexual assault and domestic mm -hmm. violence is that it's kept in the shadows. And part of Joyful Heart's work is to uh, shed a light on this work. Our mission is to uh, transform society's response to sexual assault, domestic violence, and child abuse, to support survivors healing, and to end this violence forever. And we believe that part of how we do that is to raise people's awareness and bring that uh, these issues out of the shadows, support survivors in their healing process and challenge the rest of us to engage around this issue and try to, to create change around it. And this effort, the Hawaii says no more, no more in capital letters. What does that mean? What, is, what was the campaign and how important is it in Hawaii? The, the Hawaii says no more is the local version of a mm -hmm. national initiative that started in 2013. And the purpose of No More Nationally, which is the same locally, is to raise awareness about domestic violence and sexual assault, to help uh, give visibility to these issues, and to break the social stigma that survivors often experience. The purpose is to engage the community, especially youth and men and people who haven't been exposed to these issues before, to come together. And the tagline is, together we can end domestic violence and sexual assault. Now, Kata, we, uh, 
just before the program, we spoke a little earlier about um, men being also involved too. So these issues, uh, men are not excluded. Uh, could you talk about, about, about that just a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, you know, what we know is that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually assaulted before the age of 18. We know that millions of women experience domestic violence every year and at least 800,000 men. So as victims of these horrible crimes, both women and men experience this. But we also know that in order for us to really stop domestic violence and sexual assault, that it takes both women and men coming together, not only across Hawaii, but across the country, to uh, respond to these issues, to hold perpetrators accountable, to create policies that reform the response of uh, the criminal justice system, as well as uh, raise awareness in a way that educates everybody in society about these issues. Now, for the Hawaii uh, Says No More campaign, when did that start here in Hawaii? Well, in 2014, Joyful Heart invited organizations from around the state to come together to talk about, did we want to do a local version mm -hmm. of the national effort? And everybody said yes. And uh, we worked for about a year to set up a structure. And then in March of 2015, we launched this initiative with a website, hawaiisaysnomore.org, and also awareness activities around the state. And we've been gradually growing since 2015. Uh, we now have 15 organizations that are part of the collaborative mm -hmm. that runs Hawaii Says No More from all around the state. And we have thousands of followers on social media. And we're building a strong ally component of people who want to be a part of Hawaii Says No More by joining us on our website. OK, could you repeat the website? And what are any uh, social media handles or hashtags that you use? Sure. Hawaii Says No More, all, the whole all written out, uh, .org, mm -hmm. O-R-G, is the website. And our um, social media is all HSNM, so, because it's too long. So HSNM uh, for both Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Now, I've, um, I've, I've visited, actually. I was at a Law Tower Marketplace. Uh, when there was an event last year, and, and I saw the, uh, the stickers, pins, et cetera. Uh, how important is it to reach that particular group uh, at Aloha Tower Marketplace, that's Hawaii Pacific University? Uh, you've had events connected to University uh, of Hawaii, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, how important yeah. is it to get that particular age set? Because I notice the students, they will come, and they'll, they'll of course, check out what's being given, but then they'll talk to uh, the college, the university's people there, your representatives. How important is it to reach that age group? It's crucial, both for the national campaign and mm -hmm. the local effort. One of our target audiences are youth. Uh, we know that youth are often disproportionately affected by these issues. As I statistics I just told you, we know in college that 25% of women in college will experience sexual assault just while in college. So it's really at epidemic proportions. And we really believe that we need to engage youth, not only to offer support to survivors, but also to communicate that youth can have an impact in supporting survivors and themselves and mm -hmm. talking about these issues and in really working with us to change behaviors that ultimately lead to domestic violence and sexual assault. Now, a couple of minutes ago, for our viewers, you saw uh, these uh, posters, these flyers, and they have celebrities that these uh, folks would recognize. How important is it to anchor that on recognizable faces? And they were both men and women. Yeah, that's really important. So the joyful, all the different organizations that are a part of Hawaii Says No More mm -hmm. uh, contribute in different ways to both the national and the local effort. And Joyful Heart, um, one of our contributions, because of Mariska and her role in the mm -hmm. media, we uh, developed a national PSA campaign of both uh, television spots as well as print ads. And as a part of that, um, we asked the local group, would you like to have a local version? And they mm -hmm. said, yes. Yeah. So Mariska actually came to town in June of this year and filmed a local version of the PSAs that is all with local people. And it was really important to the core team, which is the organizations that uh, drive 
Hawaii Says No More, as well as Joyful Heart Hawaii, that we have representation from local people in the imagery about all of these people that are taking a stand to stop domestic violence by, and sexual assault by coming together. We have over 23 people, uh, and then Mariska herself, who appear mm -hmm. in these PSAs. And it's a wide, wide range of the community. And that's one place that I'm really proud that we're different than what you see in the National. The National is a wonderful effort, mm -hmm. it is, but it's celebrities and um, also NFL uh, football players. And that has a huge impact. Over 4 billion people around the United States have been exposed to the PSAs, either in print or on TV or online. Here, we have a really broad range of participants. We have Mariska, we have Daniel Day Kim, um, but we also have people like Dr. Kamano Opono Crab, who is the uh, CEO of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. We have Jenna Ishii, who is a Polynesian Voyaging Society. We have Kenny Zamora, who's a designer. We, we have this huge range of a broad cross-section of the community here in Hawaii, and I think it's going to be really exciting and meaningful when those PSAs and as, come out. And as we said earlier, uh, part of it is you feel not that aloneness. You you, you feel that identification. Yes. So people feel more uh, comfortable or more willing to talk about an experience that that uh, may not be something that they're able to talk to easily. It, it that idea of you are not alone. Other people have gone through this. I, I think that's what these PSAs and the efforts to communicate. Uh, they're, they're that's what uh, the one of the messages is. Correct. Absolutely. One of the ways in which domestic violence and sexual assault works is that it tries to isolate mm -hmm. and separate. Mm -hmm. And many, many times survivors feel very much alone. Uh, and so for them to know, survivors to know that they are not alone, there's actually great support and resources throughout the state, but also that there are people across the state here and across the country who care about what happened to them and want mm -hmm. to stop it. So. Uh, Kanta, let's take a break. Afterward, let's talk about those resources. Let's talk about the other partners that you have. Uh, and we'll talk more about the Hawaii Says No More campaign, the Joyful Heart Foundation, resources for people who are going through uh, domestic abuse or have been sexually assaulted. Right now, let's learn about the other great hosts and the other great programs here at Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at three o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Welcome back to Aloha United We Stand. I'm your host, Chris Aguinaldo. Uh, again, you can join the conversation on Twitter at ThinkTechHI. And today we're having a conversation about some difficult issues that some people may uh, have, uh, you know, may have uh, problems addressing. But we're talking to folks who are trying to reach out and make sure to know, uh, make sure people know that they are not alone. I'm again joined by Kata Isari. She's the executive director of the Hawaii region of the Joyful Heart Foundation. And right now, during Domestic uh, Violence Awareness Month, October, uh, we're talking about the Hawaii Says No More campaign to raise awareness and also eradicate, eradicate, we're, we're, we want to eradicate um, sexual assault, domestic violence, but we also want to increase the dialogue, the, uh, the people who need to report about, I think what we uh, said before was uh, untold, unsaid, unreported, underreported um, crimes, really. Right. And uh, just before the break, we were talking about some of the resources, but right now we are at a time because of what happened last week with the release of those tapes of, of uh, you know, really candid, not candid, but very explicit talk that really some people have said that amounts to really uh, 
sexual uh, violence uh, being endorsed. Uh, before the show, we talked about it, and you, you have seen people increasing their conversation, myself as well, mm -hmm. when uh, it was amazing. A friend of mine, uh, in one of her social media feeds, she put down that I, ha I was a victim. And that's amazing because you wouldn't necessarily know that. How has the conversation changed in this last week on the national and also local scope? Well, I think that some very um, brave women and men have mm -hmm. taken this as an opportunity to disclose what their personal experiences have been. I also think it's brought attention to what exactly is sexual assault and sexual violence. And certainly the behaviors that were described on that tape and in subsequent um, press uh, stories that have been released uh, would be considered prosecutable in Hawaii and many other states. Um, because sexual violence includes uh, both touching and penetration of intimate body parts. And there are hard words to say, but even harder when someone experiences that. And that's why it's so important um, for anyone who's listening to this show or hears about this issue to know that there's wonderful, wonderful organizations that provide support around the state to support survivors in that healing process so that they know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. I, I remember reading that uh, one writer had asked uh, women or not just women, but anybody share um, you know, their stories. When, when did it happen to you? And basically millions of people responded. Mm -hmm. So that does show that, uh, I don't know, previous to what had happened with these uh, Donald Trump tapes, that there were people that had something happen to them. But now it's on the table. This is what happened. And with you and the people, the other organizations that you work with, you can address that, correct? That's right, and that's why Hawaii Says No More is such an important effort, mm -hmm. because part of the PSA campaign that I mentioned is gonna be airing in a, a month or two um, with our partner, Hawaii News Now, who has p contributed the production pro bono, um, and our local ad agency, Wall to Wall, who supported the development of it. Uh, part of the effort of the campaign is actually to identify the excuses that justify sexual and domestic violence. Excuses. Excuses like, well, she was drunk, or she was asking for it, or um, it wasn't that, you know, which we've been hearing in some of this national dialogue that's been taking place in the last few weeks. Uh, things like, well, it wasn't such a big deal, or he didn't mean it, or he was just joking around. And part of what Hawaii Says No More is saying is, is, is no more of that, no more excuses, no more violence, no more shame. We have to stop justifying sexual assault and domestic violence, and we have to come together to stop it. And we have to hold perpetrators accountable for their behavior, but also for the behavior after the incident that tries to justify what they did as either not that big a deal or somehow not sexual violence. In terms of being a crime, a, a crime that uh, is very public and very prosecutable, uh, you, you don't see that that much. I mean, part of it is underreporting, but how much is it that um, whatever laws or whatever people who are working hard to go after these perpetrators, how, how much is that restrained? Well, part of Joyful Hearts Mission and the work of many of the organizations that are part mm -hmm. of Hawaii Says No More is to improve the system's response to both domestic violence and sexual assault. And there are many wonderfully committed and caring law enforcement uh, yes. and uh, prosecutors around the state. But yes. we do know that law enforcement in general often has a different focus mm -hmm. and that there tends to be something of a chilling effect for survivors who engage with the criminal justice system that discourages survivors from moving forward. So there's many great organizations in the state who work to provide training for law enforcement and to address policy issues that help to counteract some of those negative behaviors that have even inadvertent effect on survivors. And we're really hopeful that that will create enough change so that survivors who do want to go, go through a prosecution process are supported in that. Not every survivor wants to prosecute, and we really support that decision. We support whatever is um, helpful in that survivor's healing and recovery process. That's why the Hawaii Says No More is an important initiative because what it does is it takes the pressure off mm -hmm. the survivor. It's the community coming together to say, we're not going to tolerate this behavior anymore and we're not going to accept the excuses. We're going to support survivors and we're going to create important change. Yes, and uh, those, those photos that we uh, saw earlier, not, not the PSAs, but it just looked like regular folks holding up their yes, signs there right. and, and taking a stand. 
they're writing in uh, how they feel. Right. It, those are, that's part of what we call the Hawaii Says No More Challenge. Mm -hmm. And anybody can go to the website and download that sign. And basically, as you can see, it says Hawaii Says No More. And then the idea is for each of us individually to think about what do we think there should be mm -hmm. no more of in order to end domestic violence and sexual assault. So people have filled in no more inaction, no more child abuse, mm -hmm. no more silence. And then what we invite anybody around the state to do is to take a picture of themselves holding the sign, put it on their social media, tag Hawaii Says No More, and then also they can put it, uh, they can send it to the Hawaii Says No More website and we will upload it into our photo gallery. So that eventually would be wonderful. We had thousands and thousands of people around the state who are taking a stand by engaging and saying what they want no more of. And can you please just uh, repeat both the website and also the social media handles? Sure. Uh, the website is all written out, Hawaii says no more dot org, mm -hmm. and the social media is all HSNM. So we have Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and we really want to engage people on those sites. And then again, seeing your friends, your family, your co workers holding up those signs that says no more child abuse, no more uh, sexual abuse, no more uh, violence. Uh, that reinforces a message, and and uh, is that really the core? M making sure people know, again, like you said, that it's people. It's not it's not focused on the victim. It's us as a community, us as a people, trying to uh, end any sort of violence or mistreatment. Absolutely. You know what we know about social issues is that to create broad sweeping change. It takes people coming together mm -hmm. at the grassroots level as well as at the policy and governmental levels. So No More is about engaging everybody, everyday mm -hmm. people, people in organizations, people in government. So is that what we can do just as regular citizens, just as uh, neighbors, as people who are walking around in our communities, as fathers, mothers? What can we just regular folk do? That's a great question. And on the Hawaii Says No More dot org mm -hmm. website, there's a, a tab that says Take Action. And some of what that Take Action tab talks about is first and foremost, we can believe survivors, we can support them. This national dialogue right now that's questioning the truthfulness of the women that have come forward is the very opposite of what we want people to do. Secondly, people can educate themselves. They mm -hmm. can learn about the statistics. They can learn about where to turn in times of help. There's a great page on the Hawaii Says No More org website that mentions resources. Every island, every county in this state has wonderful organizations that provide support to survivors and works with perpetrators to help them change their behavior. So there's a, a place for people to go when they need help. And lastly, I, what people can do is they can be visible by wearing this No More symbol, by putting the bumper sticker on their car, by doing that challenge and putting it, putting on, it on their social, social media. media. Yeah. It's a way for people to engage and to say that we as a community are going to stand together. How have you seen between uh, when the campaign first started here in Hawaii to now? How has the response been and where, where can we find uh, any sort of public events coming up re related to Hawaii Says No More? Well, uh, the response has been fabulous. And as you mentioned, we've had a particularly strong showing amongst youth. We've had, mm -hmm. um, for instance, Waipahu High School, when the campaign first initiated a year and a half ago, was so enthusiastic about it that they actually started their own initiative on campus, which they continue uh, to this day. We've seen it at HPU and at UH. Um, people who are really engaging by doing that social media challenge and by talking about these issues, which is really want to see happen. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and there's many wonderful events that are happening around the state. And in fact, right now, there's a men's march uh, against me domestic uh, violence yeah. right here on Oahu that's taking place as we speak. Um, but there's marches and rallies like that all across the state, and you can find information about those on the Hawaii Says No More org website, or you can also go to the Hawaii State Domestic Violence Coalition website, and there'll be a listing of all those activities. And again, Hawaii Says No More, it's a partner. It, it is a partnering effort among many organizations. What are some of the organizations that you're working with? It's really an, an amazing collaborative mm -hmm. group of both public and private. We have the Hawaii State Department of the Attorney General, Hawaii Department of Human Services, Catholic Charities, uh, Parents and Children Together, Child and Family Services. 
We have Women Helping Women on Maui. We have the University of Hawaii, their Manoa um, Office of Gender mm -hmm. Equity, their System Office of Institutional Equity, the University of Hawaii at Hilo Student uh, Wellness Center. It's a real, very broad base, and we've been so excited by these 15 organizations that have made this commitment to engage in No More and to promote it throughout their communities. So again, we have law enforcement involved. We have universities. Uh, other organizations just uh, coming together in the Hawaii Says No More campaign. And uh, you say within the next month or so, so make sure you look at the website, make sure you, you put on your social media those handles. Can you repeat those handles again? Sure, HSNM, so it's just the initials, Hawaii mm -hmm. Says No More. And then the website is Hawaii Says No More, all written out, dot org. And then when people follow those, when those uh, PSAs are ready, when those uh, things that you can share to your other social media websites, your social media handles, you can just share them. And these messages that are that are supporting a message of, you know, ending this uh, domestic abuse, this sexual assault, the language uh, that uh, defines sexual assault, th that will be posted up on your websites. That's right. So we have a photo gallery that mm -hmm. we en encourage people to send any pictures uh, that show support for this initiative, that show support for survivors if, when they are hosting events in their community or at their school. If they send those pictures, we'll get those up. There's also a way at HawaiiSaysNoMore.org that people can become an ally of the campaign. So although there are 15 organizations that are the guiding force, mm -hmm. any individual, any private business, anybody, any group, uh, organization, any can person? become any person can become an ally. And that's really the point. It's it's an empowerment not just only of of a victim, but a community. It's making sure that this message of Hawaii says no more while we're really saying no more. Exactly. So again, uh, we've been talking to Kata Isari. She is the executive director of the Hawaii Region Joyful Heart Foundation. And we've been talking about the Hawaii Says No More campaign. So follow those websites. Uh, follow, follow them wherever you can and share that message that you, that your friends, that your family, they are not alone. Kata, thank you so much. And thank you for our viewers for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii and Aloha United. Yeah, a lot.